questions. And uh, I don't know if anyone wants to come up. They've got Joaquin. You... Sure. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. So, to anyone, so if you guys see a patients with a failing all polyglenoid component, so classic total shoulder that you see, the patient has moderate symptoms but not severe. Do you push the patient to have a revision earlier on to not lose any more bone stock? Or are you okay following the patient for years and years and years? And number two, do you guys currently in 2020 revise any failed all poly to another cemented all poly? Or is everything is reversed? Those are my two questions. Okay. Uh, I know my answer. And so I guess for that, the question one, how aggressive I am, Honestly, I am not aggressive at all. So I allow the patient to basically declare themselves. And partially it's because I, I think it's unclear with regards to how people will evolve over time, uh, especially with their demand levels, that in a year or two, these patients may become less demanding and then therefore they may become less symptomatic. So I make them tell me that they want surgery. Um, in terms of... Uh, going, I think that's an interesting uh, 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 question. So, uh, Buddy had, uh, you know, the talk of is there anything to go from uh, anatomic uh, to anything but a reverse? And obviously, those revisions are much less common of, say, hemi to total or even total to total. And I can tell you that I have done total to total personally, but I think it's a very rare occurrence. And usually that case is someone that has either had a fracture of the implant, and so I think Buddy's example of or, where you have, uh, say, um, uh, I've done it in the Cofield implant where they've had a metal back that's well ingrown and then they'll have uh, then uh, 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 dissociation of the plastic and then you take the metal out and they have a perfectly prepared glenoid for you to then just put in an all polypeg glenoid. But other than that, I think it's a pretty rare occurrence. Um, I was just going to say for Waukee, I would just get serial x-rays when that patient low demand, probably every three to six months to make sure they aren't getting these huge cystic Change and then have to you know mod it. Then you have to revise like a big hole or uncontained defect. So I think so for me, <clears throat> I would treat non-op to start with, depend on their symptoms. Like the guy I just showed you, he comes in every six to nine months and gets a shot. He's been doing that for five years, and he's very happy. It's not gotten any worse. But I bring him back for for that. The second step, if they're really, if I'm worried about infection or I'm worried about any of that stuff, I do an arthroscopic removal. I mean, it's relatively simple with an all-poly. Laurent showed one with metal, which is harder, but an all-poly is easy to scope. You get your tissue biopsies, you take it out, clean out the cement, and a lot of those people, because you've decompressed the joint by removing the poly, they're very happy. So in, in general, over the last 20 years, probably seven out of every 10, so about 70% in arthroscopic glenoid removal buys you time, they're very happy, and they do really, really well. About three in 10 don't probably half of those are because I did a bad job getting all the cement out um, and, and the other half are just truly infected and you have to do more. <clears throat> and then the third step, if, if they do have good rotator cuff and they're functioning at a pretty good level, I'll rev revise to a total. So uh, Pascal's got some pretty good data and if you really wonder, look at your own, when you revise a, a failed total to a reverse, they don't do this. You know, they, they go to about 120 so it's not a home run in terms of some of the stuff we show here. So my sequence is less is better, and I work through it a little bit at a time. Yeah, I think you definitely, I mean, going to an anatomic arthroplasty from whatever arthroplasty, you need a good rotator cuff, you need adequate bone to be able to put your implant in, and those are the two critical elements. Um, it is a good, it's a question that I think I'll ask every, uh, you know, how often will you feel that even in the setting of an intact cuff and adequate bone, that instead of going, what Buddy said was to revising to a hemi, do you make that step that you're going to revise them to an, an, a, an anatomic, a, a new arthroplasty, either an anatomic or a reverse? And I don't know the right answer to that. Um, it could be, honestly, it's a discussion that I have, and it's more how aggressive the patient wants to be with regards to the morbidity of the surgical procedure that they're willing to undergo. Buzz? Yeah, just a comment and suggestion is, you know, once you've gone through the subcutaneous tissue, you've gotten down past the dermis where P. acnes is, irrigate it with uh, dilute betadine and uh, peroxide at that level, then take an 18-gauge needle and aspirate from there. And send the fluid not only for culture, but send it for cell count, send it for crystals, birefringent crystals. You see that in 
polyware disease. Some of these people do have chondrocalcinosis. They'll get an effusion from that. So I think you kind of enhance your ability to diagnose things. And the other question I'd ask is kind of, I think, controversial is preoperative uh, antibiotics in revision settings. Do you hold them or do you give them before you uh, use them? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if we can, uh, at least based upon the the uh, meeting that was in Philadelphia now two years ago, that data was reviewed with specific question with regards to holding antibiotics, and the recommendations from the meeting was that uh, that there's no um, reason to hold antibiotics at the time of revision for culture, and you're probably actually placing your patient at higher risk for infection because our standard of care from a primary procedure is to actually give antibiotics prior to the incision. So you're probably increasing the risk for, for, uh, for creating an infection because you're holding antibiotics and that it doesn't necessarily have an influence in terms of the culture results. And I think the total hip and knee surgeons would agree with that. Ashish? Vakim, just an answer to your question. So the registry subclassifies this. So if you look at the reasons for revision in a total shoulder, there are areas where we look at minor revisions and major revisions. And then in the minor revisions, we look at what was revised. Was it just the head or the polyethylene? So what the registry shows is that if you've got a metal back glenoid and you've got an early failure, that's going to progress. So that needs to be changed to a reverse because they will get cuff failure. If you've got an all polyglenoid and you have an early failure, you can revise it to a total shoulder again, but your revision rate is within five years they will fail. And that's because of the cuff. It's around, uh, the numbers are less, but I think it's around 7% cases, roughly out of the total shoulder numbers, which had the minor revision, early minor revision. Because as I showed, there's two stages of revision with total. There's early revisions and there's late revision. So the early revisions for glenoid are because of instability or rocking hose. If you've got a late glenoid revision, which is like eight or nine years down the track, that will not do well. So you have to revise that because that's because of cuff failure and bone loss. So the answer to your question from the Australian registry is if you have an early glenoid failure, it's usually because of component malposition or insufficient fixation. You can get away with another total shoulder replacement, but usually on an average, it's a five-year survival for that. Mark? So um, you know, I, I'm going back to the Joaquin's question, and, I, and I, maybe I'm wrong. So uh, when I talk to patients who have a failed total shoulder, and they're trying to figure out, like, when do you pull the trigger? I use the criteria. I said, is your shoulder worse now than it was before you had your index procedure? Because if it's not, you're, because the gain of improvement is never going to be the same, and the risk of complications is higher. But maybe that's not right, particularly if you're thinking about doing a more minor intervention. And I, I back to Ashish's comment, you know, when I've done, I've done arthroscopic removal of glenoids, and my results are far less uh, well than buddies. But when we looked at our failed total shoulders and we tried to understand, well, why did they fail? You know, there's a group that the subscap fail, the glenoid's fine. That, I don't think removing the component will help, it's instability. Mm -hmm. And then there's the group where the glenoid is loose. And the group that the glenoid loose, half of them have cuff deficiency, half of them didn't. But the wear pattern, the ones that had intact cuff, they were eccentrically worn when you looked at the uh, extraction of the poly implant. So my concern is if I remove that loose glenoid and now there's this defect that they're going to wear asymmetrically again. Um, and so that my thought has been, I, I don't want to intervene earlier, but I don't know if that's correct. Because maybe if I intervene sooner, they'd buy time more. And just sure. any comments from anyone? <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what the right answer to that is. I mean, I, it would make you uh, consider revising to a reverse, actually, uh, if the question was, you know, stability and eccentric wear. Um, Philippe? Yes, uh, this is a comment regarding uh, yeah, glenoid yeah. loosening uh, in anatomic arthroplasty. If you want to revise with anatomic arthroplasty, Gilles uh, proves that if you do a bone graft with a polyethylene with cement, it doesn't work. If you want to revise with anatomic, we have to accept metal back, I think, mm -hmm. because we prove that back to the metal back, the bone graft is good. And uh, if you use metal back, I think in the future, you have to use a convertible system, because we know very well that this is a polyethylene wear, and you have to follow the patient. But I think that I, I reported 10 cases of revision of polyethylene with uh, 
metal back anatomy because the cuff was good. The risk is a polyethylene wear, but I didn't, we didn't prove that back to the metal back there is a loosening. The metal back is definitively fixed. There is no problem of the bone of the glenoid. And after, if you use a convertible system, this is an easy operation. Probably metal back is, the, is a solution if we can get it to work. Okay, I think we'll move to the next uh, set of talks.